Summorum Pontificum, Pope Benedict XVI, apostolic letter given motu proprio. The supreme pontiffs have to this day shown constant concern that the Church of Christ should offer worthy worship to the divine majesty for the praise and glory of his name and the good of all his holy church. As from time immemorial, so too in the future, it is necessary to maintain the principle that each particular church must be in accord with the universal church, not only regarding the doctrine of the faith and sacramental signs, but also as to the usages universally received from the apostolic and unbroken tradition. These are to be observed, not only that errors may be avoided, but also that the faith may be handed on in its integrity, since the church's rule of prayer, lex orandi, corresponds to the rule of faith, lex credendi. Eminent among the popes who showed such proper concern was St. Gregory the Great, who sought to hand on to the new peoples of Europe both the Catholic faith and the treasures of worship and culture amassed by the Romans in preceding centuries. He ordered that the form of the sacred liturgy, both of the sacrifice for the Mass and the divine office, as celebrated in Rome, should be defined and preserved. He greatly encouraged these monks and nuns who, following the rule of St. Benedict, everywhere proclaimed the gospel and illustrated by their lives the salutary provision of the rule that nothing is to be preferred to the work of God. In this way, the sacred liturgy, celebrated according to the Roman usage, enriched the faith and piety as well as the culture of numerous peoples. It is well known that in every century of the Christian era, the Church's Latin liturgy, in its various forms, has inspired countless of saints in the spiritual life, confirmed many people in the virtue of religion, and enriched their devotion. In the course of the centuries, many of the Roman pontiffs took particular care that the sacred liturgy should accomplish this task more effectively. Outstanding among them was St. Pius V, who in response to the desire expressed by the Council of Trent renewed with great pastoral zeal the Church's entire worship, saw to the publication of liturgical books, corrected and restored in accordance with the norms of the Fathers, and provided them for the use of the Latin Church. Among the liturgical books of the Roman Rite, a particular place belongs to the Roman Missal, which developed in the city of Rome and over the centuries gradually took on forms very similar to the form which it had in more recent generations. It was towards this same goal that succeeding Roman pontiffs directed their energies during the subsequent centuries in order to ensure that the rites of the liturgical books were brought up to date and, when necessary, clarified. From the beginning of this century, they undertook a more general reform. Such was the case with our predecessors, Clement the Eighth, Urban the Eighth, St. Pius the Tenth, Benedict the Fifteenth, Pius the Twelfth, and Blessed John the Twenty-Third. In more recent times, the Second Vatican Council expressed the desire that the respect and reverence due to the divine worship should be renewed and adapted to the needs of our times. In response to this desire, our predecessor, Pope Paul the Sixth, in 1970 approved for the Latin Church revised and in part renewed liturgical books, translated into various languages throughout the world. These were willingly received by the bishops as well as the priests and lay faithful. In this way, the Pope sought to ensure that the liturgical edifice, so to speak, reappears in new splendor and its dignity and harmony. In some regions, however, not a few of the faithful continued to be attached with such love and affection to the earlier liturgical forms, which had deeply shaped their culture and spirit, that in 1984, Pope John Paul II, concerned for their pastoral care through the special indult Quatuor Abhing Anos, issued by the Congregation for Divine Worship, granted the faculty of using the Roman Missal published in 1962 by Blessed John the Twenty-Third. Again in 1988, John Paul II, with motu proprio Ecclesia Dei, ex bishops to make broad and generous use of this faculty on behalf of all the faithful who sought it. Given the continued requests of these members of the faithful, long deliberated upon by our predecessor John Paul II, and having listened to the views expressed by the cardinals present at the consistory of 23rd March 2006, upon mature consideration, having invoked the Holy Spirit and with trust in God's help, by the apostolic letter we decree the following. Article 1. The Roman Missal promulgated by Pope Paul VI is the ordinary expression of the Lex Orandi, rule of prayer, for the Catholic Church of the Latin Rite. The Roman Missal promulgated by St. Pius V and revised by Blessed John XXIII is nonetheless to be considered an extraordinary expression of the same Lex Orandi of the Church and duly honored for its venerable and ancient usage. 
these two expressions of the church's lex orandi will in no way lead to a division of the church's lex credendi rule of faith for they are two usages of the one roman rite it is therefore permitted to celebrate the sacrifice of the mass following the typical edition of the roman missal which was promulgated by blessed john the twenty third in nineteen sixty two and never abrogated as an extraordinary form of the church's liturgy the conditions for the use of this missal laid down by the previous documents quatuor abhinc annos and ecclesia dei are now replaced as follows article two in masses celebrated without a congregation any catholic priest of the latin rite whether secular or regular may use either the roman missal published in nineteen sixty two by blessed pope john the twenty third or the roman missal promulgated in nineteen seventy by pope paul the sixth and may do so on any day with the exception of easter triduum for such a celebration with either missal the priest needs no permission from the apostolic see or from his own ordinary article three if communities of institutes of consecrated life and societies of apostolic life whether of pontifical or diocesan rite wish to celebrate the conventual or community mass in their own oratories according to the nineteen sixty two edition of the roman missal they are permitted to do so if an individual community or an entire institute or society wishes to have such celebrations frequently habitually or permanently the matter is to be decided by the major superiors according to the norm of law and their particular laws and statutes article four the celebration of Holy Mass mentioned above in Article 2 may be attended also by members of the lay faithful, who spontaneously request to do so, with respect to their requirement of law. Article 5, Part 1. In parishes where a group of the faithful attached to the previous liturgical tradition stably exist, the parish priest should willingly accede to their request to celebrate Holy Mass according to the rite of the 1962 Roman Missal. He should ensure that the good of these members of the faithful is harmonized with the ordinary pastoral care of the parish, under the governance of the bishop in accordance with Canon 392, avoiding discord and favoring the unity of the whole church. Part 2 celebration according to the missal of blessed john the twenty third can take place on weekdays on sundays and feast days however such a celebration may also take place part three for those faithful or priests who request it the pastor should allow celebrations in the extraordinary form also in special circumstances such as marriages funerals or occasional celebrations for example pilgrimages part four priests using the missal of blessed john the twenty third must be qualified idone and not prevented by law Part 5. In churches other than parish or conventional churches, it is for the rector of the church to grant the above permission. Article 6. In masses with the congregation celebrated according to the Missal of Blessed John the Twenty Third, the readings may be proclaimed also in the vernacular, using additions approved by the Apostolic See. Article 7. If a group of the lay faithful, as mentioned in Article 5, Section 1, has not been granted its request by the parish priest, it should inform the diocesan bishop. The bishop is earnestly requested to satisfy their desire. If he does not wish to provide for such celebration, the matter should be referred to the Pontifical Commission, Ecclesia Dei. Article 8. A bishop who wishes to provide for such requests of the lay faithful, but is prevented by various reasons from doing so, can refer to the matter to the Pontifical Commission Ecclesia Dei, which will offer him counsel and assistance. Article 9, Section 1. The parish priest, after careful consideration, can also grant permission to use the older ritual in the administration of the sacraments of baptism, marriage, penance, and anointing of the sick, if advantageous for the good of souls. Part 2. Ordinaries are granted the faculty of celebrating the sacraments of confirmation using the old Roman Pontifical, if advantageous for the good of souls. Part 3. Ordained clerics may also use the Roman breviary promulgated in 1962 by Blessed John the Twenty-Third. Article 10. The local ordinary, should he judge it opportune, may erect a personal parish in accordance with the norms of Canon 518 for celebrations according to the older form of the Roman rite, or appoint a rector or chaplain with respect to the requirements of law. Article 11. The Pontifical Commission Ecclesia Dei, established in 1988 by Pope John Paul II, continues to exercise its function. The commission is to have the form, duties, and regulations that the Roman Pontiff will choose to assign to it. Article 12. The same commission, in addition to the faculties which it presently enjoys, will exercise the authority of the Holy See in ensuring the observance and application of these norms. We order that all that we have decreed in this apostolic letter given modo proprio, take effect and be observed from the 14th day of September, the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross, in the present year, all things to the contrary notwithstanding, given in Rome at St. Peter's on the 7th day of July, in the year of our Lord, 2007, the third of our pontificate. Pope Benedict the Sixteenth.